Hey everyone, this is Baylor, and in this video, I want to kind of preview or demonstrate Simple Admin Plus so you can kind of see what it is. And I really want to explain to you kind of why it, what it does, because it's not an application. That's something you really need to remember. Now, this isn't like an application that you actually put on your website and you get to do all this great stuff um, like a CMS would. This is more of a library of functions and a few classes that I've thrown together that should make it where it's really easy to get started and build a website very quickly um, with PHP. So this is the pre this is the page here, okay? And uh, I'm running a local server here, and I've gone ahead and when you download or buy Simple Admin Plus, it's ten dollars by the way. Um, when you buy it, you'll actually it comes with an SQL file, so you can put it in a database and uh, kind of play around with Simple Admin Plus. Um, and this is the database that it'll create. It'll create a database called, or you can you can create whatever database. I just called it Admin Plus. I um, mean, it creates two tables. You'll have a products, a categories table, and a products table. Okay, so basically, it's just supposed to be somewhat like a small CMS because if I jump into my categories table. You can see that it has an ID and a name, and each name is just supposed to, you get the general idea that it's supposed to feel somewhat like a real website, so you can kind of play around with it and work with it and things like that. Um, one thing I should mention is that in the documentation, there's actually a link to it on the, the actual file the website here, um, where you can actually go and see the documentation. I have two or three videos on using Simple Admin Plus and using different features. Now, this video is just more of going to me just more. I'm just going to show you how Simple Admin Plus works, so you can really see what it does. So, on this page, this is the first page where I'm actually working with a database. If you look at this, these two titles here, you'll see that I'm actually pulling that from my database here, where I have this building a site from something and 10 ways to make another thing these two okay um so you can actually see that it's pulled these two rows and it's actually created the paging for these link these rows okay so you can see i click on this and it takes me into query page two i can go to page three and i can just go through the just different pages okay um i'm going to show you that so if i jump over to my editor and i open up index.php um, the first thing you'll notice is that I've included the class, the Simple Admin Plus class. And I've also created a variable called Simple Admin, and I said this is equal to a new instance of the Simple Admin Plus class. And here I've passed in localhost root and the, my information, okay? And this is a normal MySQL connect. This is my server name. This is my MySQL username, MySQL password, and my MySQL database, and okay? And it automatically sets that up. And if I come down here to the actual page itself, um, you'll actually see that here I've created a variable called products, and that's equal to simple admin. So we're referencing that variable that we created before, and we're saying we're getting rows from our table products. Okay, so this is our table name. Here we're spec this is a parameter. You can read about this in the documentation. Basically, it does an order by. So I could say I want to order by the ID, I want to order by the title, I want to order by the category, ID, things like that. And if you leave it blank, it automatically does ID. And then here I'm saying I want to get two rows. So if we go back to our page and reload or whatever, you can see that it's pulled two rows, okay? If I change this number to three rows and I reload, you'll see that now we have three rows displaying. And the, okay, so let's just kind of keep going. So I've created that variable. The variable has all those rows, and it puts it into an array. So when you actually want to loop through those rows, you actually use a for each. So we'll say for each products, plural, um, as a product and then we're creating an h2 tag and we're throwing the title into that okay so you can see it has that object oriented um, reference to the title okay so these would be all the different columns it selects every single column so we get ID title description and category ID okay so once we're done with the for each what I want to do is create my paging so my paging comes from the simple admin paging links I'm telling it I want to get it from my table products so it, those are two you have to specify this is my table um, this is the table that I want to create the paging for then three specifies how many links do I want okay so you can see there's only three links visible at a time now by default it'll show a maximum of 10 links at a time and then it'll show the next and last button 
the la the next parameter, the third parameter, is set to an array, and the array says you have the first text, you have the last text. So those are your first and last links. And if you set those to false, then it no longer shows the text or the link. Um, so you can see here, I don't have a let next and last link or a first and last. And then I'm setting my previous, so my net, my previous page and my next page to an arrow. Okay, so you can see I can click on this and it takes me to page two, page three, and so on. And these pages are automatically done. If I change this to um, show six rows per page and I reload, and I scroll down, you can see there's only two links. So it's pretty dynamic. Actually, it is the fully dynamic. Um, so the next thing I want to do, I don't want to waste too much time on each thing because, like I said, the documentation is pretty thorough on how this stuff works. Um, the next thing I want to show you are forms. Okay, so I have this form.php. It's going to be really hard to see it all in the small brow, the small recording area, um, but hopefully you can see enough. I want to get to a point right here, down here. Okay, so let's just go over to form.php. And here you can see I have this form. It says contact me. I have a name, an email address, a subject, and my button. So I want to show you this is what Simple Admin Plus did. We said we have a form. Okay, so we create a variable. And we say this is Simple Admin. We have a form and then form for. Now the reason we specify we have this is a form for something um, is because normally it works with a database. So if I said this is a form for the products table, Okay, so you know I have this table over here. I'm doing a, pro a form for the products, and I put, put in the second um, parameter a number or an ID, so one in this case. If I come back over here and reload, well, none of these are linked up correctly, but if I said this was for the title, and I reload, you can see that automatically put the title in here. And that's something that really makes it easy to build forms. It's because when you're editing something in a database, you no longer have to build a form and manually go through each loop. It automatically does everything for you. You just specify, this is my table, this is my ID, or whatever it is, and title, anything. And it automatically fills that form for you. Um, the next thing, that, and so... The, what I want to show you is I have this array here, so you can auto fill. Now, if I can get Kubuntu to cooperate, if I drop this in here, okay, what it's doing is I'm specifying instead of an ID, I'm saying I have an array, and I'm saying name is equal to John Doe, email is equal to BaylorExample.com, and if I come and look, you can see that we're referencing name and we're referencing email. Now, if I come back over to my browser and reload, you can see that we have automatically filled that. And that's really where the validating part comes in handy because when you're sending a form and you're wanting to validate it, you can see we're saying validate, we're making a validate, we're saying name is equal to, we're validating the presence of name so it can't be blank. I mean, it has a minimum length and a maximum length. Um, then we're validating um, an email address and a subject so we have something to send it. And if we have any errors, then you can see that I've just created that array again, and I've made it so it automatically fills that data in. So if I change something here and make this blank and send my email, then you see my name is too long, and it automatically filled that. So the last thing I want to show you is image.php. This is going to be the last part. Hopefully, I haven't gone over 10 minutes. Um, basically, here what we have is... I'm ca I'm calling or I'm loading this image, so it's the GI. It's a GIF image from MAMP Pro, um, and I'm saying I want to resize my image to a width of 150 pixels. It'll automatically do the height for us because we're doing it by width, um, and we're saving the image as a PNG in the images folder. So let me just kind of pull this over here, okay? So you can see I have this. Well, let's create that new folder. We'll call this images. I'm afraid it's not going to... Let me go pause and just pause and uh, make this... thought I'd just show you. Here I am in Transmit, and I have that... There, here's the image, and if I jump over to where my demo.com is, um, what you can see is I have this images folder. I'm just going to change this to make it writable. And put in my password. Okay, and we'll close that out. And if I come over here and I go to image.php, okay, you don't get anything. But if I jump over to that images folder, 
you can see we have this logo.png and if I just quick look that you can see that we have this image and if I open up some information about it uh, I don't know if you could actually see it here I guess not but it would actually be the correct size and stuff if I just I guess if I just jump over here you can see it's 150 by 45 so that is simple admin plus thanks for watching this video if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment section on the actual um, area on the actual page or you can just put it in the YouTube video either or goodbye